So, something a bit different today. We are out having a few days on our narrowboat, Bonnie Mary. There we go, and it's wash day as you can see. And we are currently moored up above lock 31 east of the Huddersfield Narrow Canal uh, in very much the middle of nowhere. We'll just pan around here. Uh, isn't that gorgeous? And up that way is about a mile and another 10 or 11 locks is the famous Stanage Tunnel which we are not going to go through on this trip. We're going to start heading for home tomorrow. But I thought I would just have a quick walk through the electrical and electronic systems on the boat and make a quick video about it. And this is it. So, we start at the front here. Now in the middle on the top there should be the tunnel light, which I refurbished in a, a couple of videos, well a few videos I made quite a while ago now. But when we repainted the boat a couple of years ago, I filled in the hole and have not yet got around to drilling it out yet. So you can see the wiring coming out there and there's another set of wiring for a, a mast light for rivers. And over there, the far side, you can see the horn for telling people we're arriving. And this here, uh, there's one on the other side as well. And on that mount, the uh, red and green port and starboard navigation lights which you sort of need on rivers but not on narrow canals like this it's very hard to get lost on a narrow canal so here's the tunnel light i refurbished it had a uh, just an incandescent car bulb in it and it got water in and it all rotted out so those are three um 12 volt spotlights and so I'm just wired together inside and until the, the day I finally get around to remounting that I'll be using that as a tunnel light which is a Britex unit which is very bright and it has a one of the big magnets on the bottom and I actually put it together as a work light but it has to make do as a tunnel light Right, so working from front to back in the boat, bow to stern as we boaters say, uh, these guys are just reading lights and they're well, very bright if you turn them, point them straight at the camera. And they are intended for caravans, they're 12 volts. And as does the room light, um, when we bought the boat we pretty soon learned that uh, the word marine when applied to any goods and services means double the price so wherever possible we tend to use caravan bits and that's what this is it's just a little caravan light uh, and that really does for the bedroom and there we have the clock which doesn't work because it hasn't got a battery in and the our hand is dangling and I haven't got around to sorting it out because uh, I can't read it without my glasses on so it's not a lot of good really right so moving aft and this is hard to film because <laughs> it's all so slow so that's the shower um, and the water pump I didn't show you it's under the bed because it's a real pain to get at. Uh, so trying to move around in this extremely small space. Uh, we have a sink and you can hear the water pump running and it stops when you turn the tap off. And here we have the toilet which is a macerator toilet. Exciting stuff. And this is a gauge I fitted for the toilet here on the right, which relies on uh, a float floating up and down and somehow electrically measuring the, um, the height of the float. And of course, very soon it got gunged up and stuck on empty. So an upcoming project is to make a better toilet tank gauge because uh, 
you really want to know when it's getting full and it's time to empty believe me and that button is the toilet flush which is all automatic you just uh, press the button and it does the water and the flush and everything for you and that guy is the current um, toilet tank level gauge which is just a cheapo little counter off eBay on a very crude bit of wooden bracket and every time we flush the toilet we press the button and when that gets up to 30 the late 30s it's time to empty the tank <laughs> and that works would you believe but I still want to do a a proper gauge for it and for lights the bathroom has another of these little caravan lights and for uh, doing makeup and shaving in my case there's a couple of little spotlights by the mirror and you can see me in the mirror and there's another of these little lights in the shower but they're not really the correct IP rating and sometimes the buttons are a bit unreliable when they get when it gets damp from the shower so here we are in the living area the saloon and starting at the front um, that little guy is a carbon monoxide sensor which is showing naught nicely uh, which is now required for the boat safety which is the uh, safety certificate you have to have for your boat and the clock is just a standard clock and those two speakers are connected to that cheapo car stereo in a really crude terrible mounting because I haven't got around to building a better one inevitably uh, which provides us with our entertainment normally we just run a bunch of music we want onto a, an SD card and plug that in and just listen to that. And lurking in this corner we have two main sockets for inverter or shore power. I'll uh, go into that in a minute. And we have a very stiff, this old round pin main socket, we can still get them, but on here they're uh, 12 volts. that back in in case we need 12 volt power so this this thing goes to an extension lead which goes to this tunnel light when we were going through small tunnels the other day so the lights in here there we go our LED ones when we got the boat there were halogen ones which flatten the battery in no time up and the focus is not happy and we've got them off a company called Bedazzled and there is one at home which we will have a look at when we get home which is this one in the kitchen okay that near one which is actually just a cheapo LEDs and uh, load resistor type and the proper one with the chip in uh, failed so I've took it home and I'm going to repair it at some point I'll show you that when we get home and this panel I, I thought it was a wiring fault so I pulled this panel off to look and actually it was the the bulb so this is the one that came out and failed and what happened is there's an inductor on the output which is across those two terminals uh, which failed um, probably due to the vibration in the boat and I did get another but as you can see it's a bit big and I'm not sure there's going to be room above the top I had to kind of guess at the inductance value and I think I was over generous uh, anyway we're going to put this on and power it up and see if it goes and the chip the LED driver chip is an AMC 7150 which is a Chinese chip inevitably um, and as I say the one that just has the LEDs and a, a ballast resistor on or two is working fine so I'm not sure these weren't a bit overkill 
Uh, so, we have here a soldering iron, so we shall take these two old wires off. Okay, soldered it on, but a copton tape to stop it short into anything, and I'm sure it's going to be too big and I'll have to get a physically smaller one. So, should we connect it up and see what happens? There we go, on it comes. Drawing 60 milliamps. No, 98 milliamps. Oh, it's on constant current. Okay, drawing 224 milliamps at 12 volts. And I won't turn it over straight into the camera because it'll just blind the camera, it's blinding the camera at that. Well, we've repaired it and we'll take it back down and try it. Must make some new power supply leads up. Okay. Okay, and here we have two more main sockets, another DC sockets, and these are the switches for the and these are the switches for the lights in, in the kitchen and the saloon and the DC goes to this which is just a um, a USB charger for phones, tablets, Garmin's, you name it and over the other side we have two more sock main sockets and a switch for the fridge because the fridge was originally a main switch fridge running off the inverter which used a lot of power so we bought a proper shoreline 12 volt fridge which we've had a number of years and is very good very happy with it and you saw the washing out on the front under here we have the washing machine which is just a, a little caravan unit uh, that you put hot water in and it's mains the motors run off mains and it doesn't heat the water up itself you put hot water in it so that's it for the kitchen the cooker's gas and we go in here the uh, Electrics cupboard where it all happens and a lot of junk gets stored as well So this is the electrics cupboard which of course is Pretty difficult to film in because it's small like everything on a narrowboat. It's small So that is the main switch panel, which is homemade you can buy them, but they all seem to be 10 amp maximum and the toilet is 25 amps because it's got a big bump in it and down there is a box full of fuses, just a fuse box, one, one for each of these outputs. Can we? Oh, yes, you can see how I've divvied up the, uh, the circuits. And that guy is a big fuse for the inverter, about 100 amps. And this is the mains distribution unit. So there's just two circuits. We've got an immersion heater, one kilowatt immersion heater for heating hot water up when uh, we're connected to the shore. And that guy switches us between the inverter and the shore or mains off. That just switches the mains. And that is a silver line inverter, which has been fine. We've had it for quite a number of years and it's been perfectly fine we don't run it an awful lot having said that but I know there's a lot of people say silver line stuff's rubbish but uh, it's done us all right and mind that <laughs> this guy is just a little battery charger so we, when we're running off the uh, shore power it uh, keeps the batteries topped up because like the water pump and the toilet and so forth and the lights all run off the batteries even if we're connected to the shore they're all 12 volt uh, and 
that's the immersion heater switch and this guy is a galvanic isolator which is showing zero because we're not plugged into the shore because if you're connected to the shore you can have a ground loop through the boat the water into the shore and back through the ground connection of the shoreline and if you get some nice different metals in the water uh, you can get a battery effect and it starts to corrode your hull which you really don't want to happen so that's uh, actually just two back-to-back -back diodes or I think four back-to-back -back diodes so it doesn't actually connect the boat ground to the mains ground unless there's any current going through it and here we have a rather dusty VHF radio <laughs> for when we're on big rivers which we don't really use because they're quite tricky to firm them up and that's the aerial for the uh, stereo but I haven't got a socket for it to connect it to the stereo so it doesn't do anything at the minute oh yes all this stuff is the back of the instrument panel which I'll show you in a minute when we go outside that's the gauges and what have you goodness knows what it all does so shall we go outside and look at uh, the engine and the gauges okay so this is the engine instrument panel came with the boat it completely fud um, techo oil gauge temperature water temperature gauge and battery voltage is voltage gauge uh, and some LEDs which you can't actually see <laughs> in the daylight it's not a good idea and these are going somewhat rusty the uh, switches for the uh, outside things like the headlight which obviously is not connected as I said and the horn can we hear that there you go that's the horn and just while I'm thinking of the horn a thing to know because this boat is 50 foot long that's an awful long length of wire between that switch and the horn at the front so you absolutely actually have to use considerably thicker wire than you otherwise would um, so you're just not losing a lot of voltage down the wire and there's an equation it tells you how much thick wire you have to use and it gets expensive when you're rewiring a boat and that is where the shore power comes in the standard socket and that is uh, a socket for uh, another navigation light at the back which is supposed to have on rivers uh, not sure it actually exists anymore so I don't seem to have the video I thought I'd taken at this point of showing around the engine bay um, possibly due to a super reliable Japanese camera going wrong or possibly due to operator error on my part I'll leave you to uh, decide which of those you think is the case um, so I'm no longer on the boat so it's not convenient to go and shoot it again so I'm tending towards maybe shooting another boat video and going into a bit more detail of uh, a few things uh, but until then we'll just have to uh, move on to the next video clip and back into the electrics box so all the wiring in here is uh, done by me I completely rewired the boat when we got it because its previous owner had wired it or bought it as a sail away which is to say an empty shell with a, an engine in and wired it up using solid core house wire which is a huge no-no because it'll just uh, the vibration will just make it fracture and fail eventually so hence I rewired the whole thing uh, so that's about it for this little walk through of the electronic and electrical systems on Bonnie Mary and you will notice there aren't that many electronic systems and you might think that's strange for somebody who tinkers with electronics so as much as I do but I like things simple uh, the less to go wrong the less will go wrong and when even a, 
an isolator switch can start failing on you who wants a lot of fancy electronics. That's my philosophy anyway. Mini! <whistles> Mini! And this is Minnie, the ship's dog, normally on triplicate videos to be found yapping madly at the po postman in the background. And here she is, in person, just chilling on the back deck. There we go. Say hello, Minnie. And I thought, finally, join the ranks of all these car videos and do a cold start on the engine. I had to manoeuvre around with the hatch up without falling down the engine hole. So that's the power on to the uh, to the instrument panel, and that you can see the voltage has gone down. That's the heat of plugs. So there we go. And the engine's labouring a bit because. Factories are a long way down. So there you go, and it's good vibes and typical. Um, interesting electronics, and in this case, electrics. Uh, just good vibes and money. Goodbye.